Okay, look, have a look at this problem here. Now, we're gonna use nodal analysis for this. So we're gonna define this guy here really as my reference node. So that's my reference node, and that's at zero volts, okay? We're gonna call this our node one, which is, has a voltage V1. This is our V2 node, voltage at node two. And we're gonna sum the currents, just as we've done before. So let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and see if we can do that, all right? So what have we got here? Coming into this node, so this is the V1 node. So look, coming into the V1 node, we have what? One milliamp, okay? We've got this current down here, which is a minus V1 over 1K. But we've got the current here. Now, what is this current here? Yeah, well, I don't know what it is. So let's just call it something for the moment, and I'm gonna call that current IX and I'm gonna define it as going in that direction. And so from that node point of view, that Ix there is a minus Ix, and all of that is equal to zero. All right, so that's our first node equation. Let's have a look at the V2 node. So here we are, V2. All right, what's coming into this node? Well, we've got two milliamps coming in. So that's two milliamps. Um, now this current here, which of course is what? It's a minus V2 over 2K. And then I've got this current IX, which we've called coming in this direction. So it's coming in, so that's a plus IX, and all of that is equal to zero. All right. Well, let's work on this equation for a moment and write it in terms of IX. We can say that IX is equal to, okay, so I'm taking that to the other side and that to the other side, it is equal to this V2 over 2K minus two milliamps. All right, what we'll do is we'll take that IX now and we'll substitute it in to the first equation. So if we do that, we have one milliamp minus V1 divided by 1K. And then of course this is a minus and Ix is this thing here, so I'll put that in a bracket. That is V2 over 2K, and of course that's a minus two milliamps, and I'll close the bracket, and all of that is equal to zero. All right, so let's just expand the bracket out, okay? So what do we have? Well, we have one milliamp minus the V1 over the 1K, and then it's of course minus V2, over the 2K, minus times a minus gives me a plus, and so that's a plus two milliamps, and all of that is equal to zero. All right, so that's really one equation, isn't it? But we've really got two unknowns. So what do I do now? Well, let's look at this here. Um, V2 minus V1 would be what? It would be that voltage there, which is 10 volts. So we can write that down. We can say V2 minus V1, of course, is equal to 10. So we have another equation. So we have two equations with two unknowns, and we can now use these two equations to solve really for those unknowns. Look, there is another way that I could actually approach this problem. Yes, this is the V1 node, this is the V2 node, and of course this is my reference node sitting here at zero volts. But I could approach this problem by sort of combining these two nodes together. So I'll put a little kind of circular thing around there, and I could say, well, maybe I could call that combination here, I might be able to call that perhaps a, what we might say, a super node. All right, now how do I deal with that? Well, let's think about it. Once again, I'm calling that like one single node here, right? And I'm looking at what's going into it, what's coming out of it, what's going into it, and what's coming out of it. And I should be able to write down an equation directly doing this. So let's look at this. What's going into this, this sort of shape here? Well, I've got the one milliamp going in. It's going in, so it's one milliamp, okay? Coming out, I've got what? I've got this V1, haven't I? So I could say this is a minus V1 
over 1K. All right, so that's coming out of here. All right, coming out of here, what have I got? I've got a minus V2, have I not, over 2K. And then going into that, I've got what? I've got a plus 2 milliamps, and all of that is really equal to zero. Now, is this not the same equation that we just derived before? Except we didn't have to specify the little i of x there and deal with it in that manner. We combine these two into what we can call this supernode, and we get this equation directly. So we consider what's going in or out, what's going in or out, and we come up with this equation, as I say, directly. And then the second equation comes from the fact that we know that V2 minus V1, V2 minus V1, of course, is equal to that 10 volts. And we now have, then, the two equations, this guy here and this guy here, that we need to use, really, to actually solve for V1 and V2. And so this is introducing this idea, then, of combining and forming a supernode. So this is a real simple problem, and I'm going to let you go ahead and find V1 and V2. Have fun, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.